on now. Let's reason together. The phone lines are open, and it's your voice we want to hear. So call 855-244-0077. Now, here's J. Michael McCoy. It's 10 before the top, and the Salem Radio Network, and then Steve Dace here on the 26th day of September. In the Lord's year 2012, Tom Coates has been my guest host today, and our guest has been Congressman Tom Latham running in the 3rd District against Leonard Boswell. Uh, please make sure that we vote for Congressman Latham. He is he's one of the good guys. You know, he's in there busting his butt. He's got a private business. He's got a family he's raising. He's not a hot dog Washington guy. Uh, believe me, Tom and I know the hot dog Washington guys. They they hover around here all about every four years. So uh, we, we would appreciate your vote. Good question. you got five grandkids. I've got five. five grandkids. One of my grandkids and I talk a lot about politics and, and government, probably more government than politics. And we were taking a trip to Marshalltown the other day, and so we got talking about uh, what he thinks, I, what I think this country will look like uh, in 20 years. And uh, I think a lot of it comes from uh, just the, the greed and the bribery that centers around Washington. And he said the most amazing thing. He said, Grandpa, why do we uh, uh, not uh, uh, let them spend money on ads for the elections? Why don't we give each candidate so many minutes on so many networks and everything else has got to be shaking hands and kissing babies. What has to happen for that? Could that ever happen? Because you guys would have to vote for it. Uh, I, you know, it's certainly anything could happen in Washington. In Washington uh, uh, Bill Square. I, I would have real concerns about that as far as government financing uh, candidates that I totally disagree with. My taxpayer dollars going to fund somebody that uh, doesn't okay. share my values. Does that bring out the crackpots? Absolutely. Okay. Yeah. Okay. All right. So that wouldn't be a good solution. Well, it's, I, I just have a real problem with me uh, and anybody uh, funding a campaign for someone who is diametrically opposed to their positions. Okay. Uh, what about uh, term? Uh, term limits? Yeah. I mean, you uh, just spent 18 years there, right. so. Well, and, and I supported, uh, you know, a vote back when the contract with America, when I first got yeah. elected, the whole idea was to have a vote on term limits, which we did. I will tell you that for Iowa, it would not be good. Uh, the reason that I'm chairman of a subcommittee on appropriations is for seniority. Uh, what you would have uh, in a small state like Iowa and all the other small states would not have opportunities for positions of power in Washington. Okay. They'd have the big states all get together and they would appoint their own people as okay. far as chairmanships and all that. So I, I you know, it sounds good. Uh, you've got to remember last election, it's not like we don't turn over people. We had 87 seats change hands. I know, but the nothing last changes election. in Washington. Well, yes. Now, Does it? You know, just look at where we were two years ago. Okay. You had a president, you had super majorities in the Senate and the House of Representatives for the Democrats. Our founding fathers were very smart. They devised yeah. a system where you had the House of Representatives voting every two years. And so what they did when they saw the ship of state going so far left, so fast, they said no, and they stopped it. We have 65 new Republicans uh, in the new majority to stop this. It's a gridlock. Uh, yeah, but people voted to stop, stop. that agenda okay. last time. Now, now, it takes two elections for real change. Okay. You have to change the control like we did in the House, but you also have to change the Senate and the White House for real change. And so if we could do that this time, absolutely, we could We could actually maybe do a U-turn with the Queen Mary. You're exactly right. All right. Um, question. Um, I had it in my head. Let, let, let me throw one in there, Mac. One okay, more I wanted to get at. In fact, your comment at one point made me think about this. The media bias, we talked about it off the air a second ago, is as blatant, I think, as I've ever seen it, and dovetailing that with polling, that is just as bogus as it can be, and it also intends to dispirit us. It, it wants to make us think that the race is over. Uh, Ohio came out with some bogus polls the other day. Uh, this, last week, the day that the NBC poll showed that Obama with a two-digit lead in Iowa, Rasmussen came out and said Romney's got a two-point lead. up by three. Yeah. The, this idea that, that these pollsters are oversampling the Democrat constituency, assuming that, I think uh, in 
Last time around in 08, you had, for instance, the blacks that made up normally 11%, make it up 14% of the votes. The young people were a much larger c p percent of the vote uh, four years ago. There's nobody that believes that they're going to turn out in those numbers. Their enthusiasm is not there, and yet these pollsters continue to sample based on a 2008 turnout that will not repeat. Well, you're exactly right, and I, you know, I'm going to visit with students tonight at Drake. Uh, you know, when they graduate, 50% and only 50% actually get a job in their area of study because of this economy and this president. I, you know, half of them are going back and living in their parents' basements uh, with no opportunity to really get ahead and to pursue that dream that they had going through college and the opportunity that they thought they would have. Uh, they're, you're exactly right. The intensity is on our side of the aisle. We have people coming out of the woodwork that we have never seen volunteering, making phone calls, putting up yard signs, knocking on doors. They're out there all the time. The intensity is there for us. Uh, we've got to make sure, as I mean, as a candidate, I'm going to work 24-7 uh, and try to get the resources to be able to respond to all the negative ads and all those things. But our greatest resource in this election are the people out there who are going to make the difference. And don't be influenced by these polls because this early voting uh, what they're trying to do is influence people on the early vote here to say that they give up, go ahead and vote for uh, Obama, and is, is simply a strategy that they have in place to try and influence the vote. Well, for those of us that have a biblical worldview, understand that polls in biblical times equal false prophets. Now, I, I know politicians would rather not think about that, but for me, you know, I'm a Jesus freak, mm -hmm. and I look at the world through a biblical worldview. And you just look at the way uh, the Old Testament and even the New Testament speaks what false prophets are, that's what a poll is. Mm -hmm. So for me, I don't pay any attention to them at all or try not to. And we as Christians shouldn't let them uh, face us at all because they're of, they're, of, they're of the accuser. Okay, They're not honest. They're trying to make us think something that isn't true, and uh, we shouldn't believe that. Okay, real quick, couple questions. Best thing about your wife? Uh, she's uh, <laughs> the best thing uh, that she loves me. I mean, that, that's the thing that I appreciate the most. And she is a. Uh, uh, Did you marry she, up like all oh, of us? Oh, I married of way us. up. Okay. I don't know what she ever saw in me, but uh, uh, she is a great mother. She's a, a tremendous grandmother. She actually, we've got our eight-month-old. Uh, she's yeah. with today, taking care of it. Uh, that our grandson, uh, and this a ball. She yeah. just has. She's always. She's always there for him. This is a really tough job for spouses. Yeah. And she's just absolutely steady all the time. She's there yeah. for me. Uh, it's pretty neat. Best thing you like to do with your grandkids? Oh, just go fishing. I love really? that. Yeah. Uh, you know, to fishing. me, there you go. to me, it's to be able fishing, to. It's about or the fish. It's about the fishing, right? Well, absolutely. No, the time that you have to sit. And you can talk about whatever you're putting a worm on a hook and catching yeah. a bullhead or something like that. You know, it's great. We have a ball. Congressman Tom Lathan is our guest. Vote. And if you're a Christian, just vote once, please. And uh, we thank you for being here today, Congressman. And we'll see you tomorrow live here on The View from a Pew. Thank you.